He, from the time he could walk, he was his father's shadow. And his dad loved having him by his side. They were best friends. Some of the clearest memories I have with my dad are either in the basketball court at the farm or the nearby garden where we had horses, right? And we had a large garden as well. He needed wide open spaces and his horses. The handful of people that meant the most to him, he didn't need like much else. My parents found a way to always make sure and provide. And I look back on that and have obviously a lot of learnings that I try to now instill in my kids, right? So wonderful childhood, had all the opportunities in the world. I couldn't be more grateful for all of them. Out of high school, he was he was really good. And he, he had a, a, a few different places that he, he could have gone, but he ended up going to the U of U. Decided to go there as a walk-on, had a great experience, great relationships there. He went on his mission with the assumption that when he came home, there would be a spot for him. But there was new coaching staff there, and so he took the path of slick. And with, I think it was only like on the second or third or fourth game, he was hurt. It's hard when you take a break like that and then get back to a sport and just hit the ground running. And so come the end of that season, had a hard decision to make, right? Do I stay and do I continue to try to, you know, play one more year or do I move on? Do I go to BYU where I wanted to go to school anyway, right, where my dream was? He was told that he would never play Division I and you don't tell Craig he will never do something because that lights a fire underneath him and he'll prove you wrong. He's the most determined soul. And at that point I made a decision that I was gonna go all in and, and go the unconventional path and that next fall, my ankle had, you know, probably six to nine months to heal. Even though it's it's never been the same, you know, I went to walk on tryouts and made the team. He had reached a goal, I mean, that he had dreamed about. And there was only one point when I think he might have gotten a little down, discouraged that he wasn't getting a scholarship when he saw everyone else coming on, getting scholarships, and yet he was starting on some games. And he came to us, never complained, but at one point he said, I'm, I'm thinking I might throw in the towel. And his father and I just said to him, don't ever allow money to dictate your dreams, sweetheart. We will find a way. And we did. And I really think being a walk-on has been the greatest blessing because it's taught him so many lessons that he can teach his children that when you want something bad enough, it's, it's worth whatever you have to do to fulfill a dream. Going into my senior year, I, I had obviously personally and as a team, right, and as a group, we had a lot of optimism around what we could do and what we could accomplish. And, you know, that time, right, my dad's health was very good, right? So we had a great season. I, I individually was having a pretty good season and I, I, I felt like I was contributing the way that I was supposed to, but we got to, about the midpoint of the season. I remember it was in February. I had a game to play Utah State, right? And it was it was the night of, of the Utah State game when, you know, my dad collapsed the night before the game. He had got up and I heard him down in the kitchen. And then I heard a thud. It's right there. And I ran down and called 911. And they came and they didn't seem to be really concerned. They said, take your time. But when I got to the emergency room, they said, just to be certain, we're gonna take him up for some x-rays. Made multiple trips back to the hospital right down the road to see my dad as we were trying to figure out what had happened. And, you know, long story short, they found a cancerous tumor right in my dad. And it was about an hour before the game that evening versus Utah State here at home when I found out that he had cancer and it was pretty clear it was a serious form of pancreatic cancer. That was obviously a incredibly life-changing moment, not just for him, but for my whole family. Coach Rose was wonderful. He had told Craig he didn't need to suit up. And he said, that's the last thing my dad would let me do. And he talked to Craig a minute before he left for the game and just said, son, it's gonna be a good night. On game day, everything's lockstep, it's code red. From the 
moment you wake up, everything is patterned so it's exactly the same. It's reproducible every single game so that you can have a chance to perform at your highest level. And on this day, nothing felt right. All of our minds were somewhere else, grappling with this news, trying to feel for Craig. And then we got into this game and through this whole game, it was just frustration the entire game. Here's Cusick for three. That's too strong. Everything was different. I was in a funk, which is astonishing to me that Coach Rose kept me in the game at the end of the game. Just things didn't fit right until the very last second. Carlino for three. Off the front end, followed by Cusick. It's over. In one second. It is the buzzer sounds, and Craig Cusick hits that putback. It was just like the magic of sports, because sometimes sports take something that can never be made right, and just for a second, it makes it right for everybody. Like, life had just thrown our family, like, and my dad, its biggest punch, and that was Craig's response. And what that did for me through that process, it set the tone for the whole thing. Not how many people could have done that? I would have missed. I guarantee it. <laughs> and it didn't fix, it didn't fix anything, but it gave us all a moment that was extraordinary. Craig gave us that because of the toughness that he has inside of him, that 100% he would tell you, every bit of that toughness came from his dad, who was his coach and his father and his best friend and his mentor. And it's, it's, it's one of the great moments in, in BYU basketball history.